Hello, you're listening to Count Richard von Kudenhof Clergy. Today is Friday, March the 29th, and here's a couple of comments since my last video. In Prague, an Islamic preacher in the Czech Republic has come under severe criticism after telling Muslims on his Facebook page that they should equip themselves with weapons following the New Zealand terror attack. The Imam, chairman of the Prague Muslim community, said, In light of recent tragic events, I inform all members, especially men, arm themselves to protect their health and their property. Contact me, I will help you. Assalamu alaikum. In Malta, a tanker hijacked by migrants picked up in the Mediterranean has docked in Valletta following a special forces operation. The El Hiblu 1, a 52 metre tanker registered under the flag of Paolo, an archipelago of over 500 islands in the western Pacific Ocean picked up 120 migrants when they were travelling from Turkey to Tripoli from human traffickers off the coast of Libya. After receiving a distress call on Wednesday and was en route to Tripoli, but on realising that they were heading back to North Africa, triggering a furious response. Six miles off the coast, the ship suddenly changed direction and headed north in an apparent hijacking. Matteo Salvini refused to allow the boat to dock and said that these are not migrants in distress, they are pirates and they would only see Italy through a telescope. Once contact was established with the vessel, the captain repeatedly stated he was not in control of the vessel and was being forced to head to Malta. The ship was prevented from entering Maltese waters by a patrol vessel and a special forces operation began with the ship eventually being secured. The vessel then docked at 8.45 a.m. Later on, under armed guard, the migrants were led off the vessel, four of them in handcuffs. This follows on from the hijacking of a ship, the 236-metre-long cargo ship Grand Thema in the Thames estuary on December 22, 2018. Under international maritime law, a distressed seaman only has to be dropped off at the nearest neutral port. With the ending of the NGO-sponsored migrant rescues, this could become a phenomenon that has not been seen in the Mediterranean for over 200 years, dating back to the Barbary pirates. All vessels should have senior officers trained in firearms drill, and in the event of a hijacking and if crew safety is at risk, lethal force should be allowed. If the maritime authorities don't deal with this situation quickly and harshly, it could become a bigger problem. And still in Italy, an Italian priest has been arrested in connection with a forgery operation that saw over over 1,000 Brazilians illegally buy Italian citizenship papers in a 5 million euro business. The investigation took over a year and led to the arrest of seven people in the region of Piedmont. Each set of documents cost in the region of 7,000 euro and had to be paid in cash. The priest's role in this was helping forge baptism certificates for cash. The money was just resting in his account. Where did I hear that before? Austrian authorities in Vienna on Monday have arrested a 42-year-old Iraqi man suspected of carrying out an unsuccess- unsuccessful terrorist attacks on high-speed trains in Germany in October and in December. In early October, a train hit a steel cable hanging from an overhead pylon that smashed the driver's window. Luckily, the driver was not injured. A note expressing ISIS sympathies was found nearby, and in December, police found serious damage to overhead wires, and nearby a note in Arabic and an ISIS flag was found. He was charged with attempted murder, causing serious damage to property, membership of a terrorist organisation and dangerous interference with railway traffic. The man worked for a security company where he had access to soccer stadiums and shopping centres and was an ex-Iraqi army member and arrived in Austria as an asylum seeker over 20 years ago. With the increase in the number of Pakistani and other Asian security guards in Ireland, you have to wonder, are the Irish authorities and indeed the security companies doing sufficient background checks on these individuals. If the taxi industry is anything to go by, this has to be a cause for concern. In the wake of the New Zealand terrorist attacks, a vigil with over 20,000 people was held in Christchurch 
on the two week and on the second anniversary with women yet again wearing the headscarf as an act of solidarity now let's get some perspective of this from some muslim women the hijab harbors deep islamic doctrine con connections to slavery and discrimination western women who cover themselves are unwittingly endorsing an inhumane system you could see this in syria the first thing women who did after being freed from isis control was to remove the burqa and the headscarves in acts of celebration mariam uh, Shatari Madani, an Iranian woman aged 32, was brutally assaulted by police for standing at a traffic light on February 26, 2018, without wearing her headscarf. She was jailed for one year on the 25th of March. On her release, she said that during my detention, I've been tormented when they keep yelling that even in the West they praise the hijab and I'm a disgrace to society. In the West, they unintentionally help fundamentalists suppress women like me when they glorify the hijab and make it a symbol of harmony. She was the second woman to be jailed, another on March the 7th, sentenced to 24 months in prison. Nazarin Sodude, a 55-year-old human rights lawyer, has been arrested on numerous occasions defending women's rights to remove the hijab and an opposition activist was arrested in Iran in June 2018 and this year on March the 12th was jailed for 38 years and 148 lashes. According to Iranian penal code, anyone in public places and roads who openly commits a haram stroke sinful act in addition to the punishment shall be sentenced to two months imprisonment or up to 74 lashes. Headscarf acts of appeasement are distinctly a Western trait and their foolish hopes that somehow, contrary to all evidence, that they can coexist with Islam, those sole purpose is to subjugate them in the West. They have the luxury of choice, millions of women do not, and they are beaten, imprisoned or even killed for not wanting to be forcibly wearing. Footage has also emerged from New Zealand of the Prime Minister talking to a senior member of the Muslim community where he thanked her for her show of solidarity and said that she was a good role model for other political leaders and the only thing that would make him happier would be to see her embrace Islam. Now for some domestic issues. A cannabis user, Arthur Lowemby, 33, took a bag of cannabis to Kamenum Garda Station to complain that it was not of good quality. He was immediately arrested and searched and was found to be in possession of a sharp knife. The former student nurse from Malawi who came to Ireland in 2012 and with an address at a direct provision centre was arrested a second time when he came back to Kamenum Garda station demanding his knife be returned to him and became very aggressive when it wasn't. He refused and he was also charged with multiple charges of trespass in the Inchicore area. Another demonstration by asylum seekers, this time down in Clonakinalty, where they were complaining about living conditions. This, when figures released about homelessness in Ireland have gone up to 10,000 for the first time. How many of these demonstrations are organised by NGOs under the umbrella of the European Network Against Racism? 87 different NGOs dealing with racism operating in Ireland. One resident complained that she had been granted asylum but cannot find alternative accommodation. Now those of you who want open borders and homes for all, there's your answer. You can have one or the other but not both. And where are the direct provision centres for the 10,000 plus homeless Irish? Gemma O'Doherty's meeting on Monday down in Cork was cancelled by the hotel at the last minute after receiving threats from the public. She announced that she would announce another venue at 5pm on her Twitter and Facebook page, which she did, and one hour later it too was cancelled. The use of the venue due to harassment by phone and emails. This time, as well as the, the usual suspects, pe profit before people were also mentioned and as being involved in the protest, free speech being denied. How come Niall Boylan doesn't have her on as he has had Herman Kelly on on numerous occasions? 
not my Taoiseach mentioned in the Dáil this week that it was the responsibility of the Irish government to bring back Lisa Smith or whatever her Arabic name is now back to Ireland. This woman who has disgraced the uniform of the Irish Air Corps and the Army by swapping it for her terrorist organisation. I'm reminded of a story while Enda Kenny was in Washington in March 2016. Senior Lieutenant Alexander Prokhorenko, a special operations officer with the Russian army who was behind enemy lines directing airstrikes on ISIS forces when he was surrounded by the enemy. He was, he was preventing the historical city of Palmyra being bombed accidentally and preventing ISIS forces from bombarding it. He was ordered to move to safety but said that he couldn't as he, as he said he was surrounded and said I don't want them to take me and parade me, conduct an airstrike on my position. They will make a mockery of me and my uniform. I want to die with dignity and take as many of these bastards with me as I can. Please, they will kill me either way. Thank you, Commander. Tell my family and my country I love them. Tell them I was brave. Avenge my death, Commander. Thank you and goodbye. Alexander was killed on Patrick's Day, in Patrick's Day 2016. On May the 5th later on that year, in the Roman theatre where Isis beheaded, captured Syrian army soldiers, musicians from St. Petersburg held a concert in his honour and a street in the town where he was born changed its name. He received Russia's highest honour. That is how you wear a uniform of your country. And I, for one, will think of this man, Alexander, on, say, on each St. Patrick's Day for many years to come. But there are a couple of thoughts which are my own. Thanks for listening. Good night and good luck.